Good morning and uh, welcome to this oversight hearing on the Department of Interior's Office of Insular Affairs Fiscal Year 2023 budget request. I want to welcome the governors uh, from the insular areas who are joining us remotely. Uh, Governor Brian from the U.S. Virgin Islands, uh, Governor Le Leon Guerrero from, uh, the, from Guam, and Governor Malga of American Samoa. I understand Governor Torres uh, of the Northern Marianas is unable to join us today, but has submitted his testimony for the record. And uh, without objection, that testimony shall be included in the hearing record. Welcome also to Mr. Don, the budget director for the Office of Insular Affairs. Uh, and it is uh, disappointing. Uh, Deputy Assistant Secretary Nakoya is not here to defend his office's budget. I note that for Governor Leon Guerrero and Governor Malga, as I said earlier, this is the middle of the night for them, which shows the importance they place on President Biden's budget priorities for insular affairs. And lastly, welcome to Mr. Sobolik of the American Foreign Policy Council. Historically, the economies of the insular areas have lacked the rest of the United States, often relying on federal funding to meet basic human needs. Our economies rely Our economies rely on tourism, which has been particularly hard hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. And although we may be seeing tourism beginning slowly to tick up, to arrive as the pandemic uh, wanes, hopefully the trend continues. And um, hopefully in a year, two years time, we would have an economy that's a tourism industry, a hospitality industry that's once again improved, much more improved than we had in the past two years. Uh, nevertheless, serious damage has been done. According to the U.S. Department of Commerce Bureau of Economic Analysis, the gross domestic product of Guam decreased 11.9% in 2020 because of COVID. We do not yet have the 2020 GDP data for the Marianas. The Bureau of Economic Analysis said they're still waiting on government financial data from the government, Commonwealth government. But we know the Mariana's economy faced multiple challenges even prior to the pandemic as a result of Super Typhoon Mewtwo in 2018. And whereas Mariana's GDP fell 19.3% in 2018 and another 11.2% in 2019, with sharp declines in tourist spending, casino gambling revenue, and private fixed investment. The U.S. Virgin Islands and American Samoa face similarly extreme economic challenges. And with the, without the financial help Congress has provided, it is hard to imagine how any of the insular areas would have made it through the pandemic. The American Rescue Plan Act provided the Marianas, for instance, with $160 million to keep teachers paid and students in school. $25 million went to nutrition assistance for families who lost income and 482 million went directly to the Commonwealth Treasury for government operations and other purposes. Not to mention the continuation of unemployment assistance, economic impact payments to individuals, and the money that was an assistance that was necessary for, uh, for help uh, from vaccines to testing. And of course, we are disappointed the president's Build Back Better agenda was not funded. Uh, he would have provided nearly $1 billion for insular infrastructure that would have gone a long way to upgrading our hospitals. You know, whether it's a Guam Memorial Hospital, it's the Commonwealth Health Center, uh, or uh, the LBJ Hospital in America. And someone, of course, uh, in health infrastructure also to U.S. standards for also the U.S. Virgin Islands. But the president's fiscal year 23 budget continues to pursue many of the Build Back Better goals in the insular areas. There is increased funding for the Coral Reef Initiative, which addresses the effects of climate change and protects native ecosystems from further damage. And the president has proposed $15.5 million for the Energizing Insular Communities Program, an increase of $4.5 million over the fiscal year 22 enacted level. This program to develop renewable energy and improve grid efficiency can both reduce carbon emissions in the insular areas and reduce energy costs for the people I represent. 
given how important it is to all Americans right now to cut energy costs, I hope Mr. Don will tell us what the Office of Insular Affairs is doing to implement Public Law 113-235, which authorizes the Energizing Insular Communities Program with the specific goal of lowering the cost of electricity. This is not the first time that I have asked this question of the Department of Interior. And so, but again, I wanna welcome all our witnesses today. We look forward to receiving your testimony. And um, I'd now like to uh, recognize the vice